Hey friends, I'm Zen and this is Zen's Corner and today, today friends, we are doing a deep dive into A Seat at the Table by Miss Solange Knowles. Come on now. I feel like you should know about this one, but if you don't, it's okay because we're going to talk about it. But if you do, let me know if you agree with how I feel about this beautiful, amazing album. So let's get into it. Solange's fifth studio album, A Seat at the Table, was released in 2016, um, right in time to bless my life and to give me a soundtrack through high school because I needed it. <laughs> this album is comprised of 21 beautiful, soul-enriching songs that all delve into the topic of a, a seat at the table, exactly what the title says so let's talk about the title a little bit before we get into my favorite song. okay so first i want to break down the name a seat at the table like that is that first of all that was my senior quote a seat at the table because i feel like many people from many different backgrounds it from many different backgrounds, I will say, but for this album and for this video, I'm talking about black people's experience in the world, in life, and making a seat at the table for yourself as a woman and whatnot. So I just wanted to clarify that because in any instance you can say or experience not having a seat at a table, but for this, this we are talking about us so yeah um a seat at the table is just such an important concept and thing to like constantly remind yourself of like always bring your seat at the table so a seat at the table definitely not a new concept not a new saying um as a matter of fact in the 1970s congressperson miss shirley chisholm said that if they don't give you a seat at the table, bring a folding chair. And I think this is so funny because remember that event in Alabama that just happened? Um, they brought a folding chair, all right. They brought a folding chair, all right. <laughs> but in all seriousness, sometimes you really do have to bring your own chair to the table because there's not always going to be someone that's like, I'll save you a spot or hey like I got you you know sometimes you have to really put yourself in the places that you want to be in and we're gonna get more into it obviously when we talk about the song specifically but as a black individual as a black person sometimes when we get into certain spaces we feel the need to alter ourselves you know like code switch um so that there aren't certain microaggressions or that we're not perceived a certain way or that we won't get overlooked for certain positions or opportunities. So, but something this album has taught me and just reminds me of is that when you come to a table, when you come to an area that you want to be in, you can't like halfway be yourself you can't hide who you are just to appease people i'm like i me as a black woman i'm not gonna be half of who i am so that it's more palatable for you if you can't if we can't like respectfully respect each other then that my seat is not like taking my folding chair putting it at a different table you know like it's definitely, I also think it's like, at some point, there could be a slippery slope because sometimes we don't be, we don't need to put ourselves in certain places that we are not, that we don't see ourselves in. We just need to create our own spaces that are more inclusive and more um, knowledgeable, basically, because if obviously if you're not included in a space because of what you look like then what you don't need to be there but I understand the need to want to see more inclusivity and 
When asked about the title of her album, Solange said, It's an honor to be able to have a seat at our table and for us to open up in this way and for us to feel safe enough to have these conversations and share them with you. So that sentence alone is a reason why I love talking about this album because I feel like when I talk about this album, everyone has a song that they can relate to and then it opens up conversation and then it's just so important to have that space and to be able to express yourselves in ways that you enjoy, like to have these albums and they talk about topics that aren't always so nice or experiences that are not always so nice but we have this body of work that we can talk about it and not feel like so drained if that makes sense it's it's a way to express yourself and to listen to something that you relate to without it being like trauma just in your face you know what I mean Especially in today's media, it's so easy to be traumatized from the internet. It's so easy to see, like, just terrible things that are happening to our communities. Um, So it's nice to have these albums that we could sing along to. And especially, like, the this album is about Black people and music has, has been in our community forever. Forever, like... So having that line where it's like, it's a connection to the past, it's a connection to the present, it's, it's beautiful just to talk about and to be able to discuss with other people who understand. I think that honestly, while writing the record, I was writing for myself. To be honest, I was writing for my family and my friends. I was wanting to be the voice of my group text chat. I was wanting to be the voice of my grandparents. I wanted to be the voice of my son, my niece, so that's really the audience that I was writing from the perspective of. Some songs are received in a certain way, but honestly I was writing them for myself and for my healing and for my self-discovery. On some moments that can be universal, and then some moments I feel like that is for us, by us, and we deserve to have that moment. So with that being said, let's get into my favorite songs. Okay, so the first song we're going to talk about is actually the first song on the album called Rise. And the lyrics read, Fall in your way so you can crumble. Fall in your way so you can sleep at night. Fall in your way so you can wake up and rise. And at the end, it's walk in your way so you won't crumble. Walk in your way so you can sleep at night. Walk in your way so you can wake up and rise. And to me, these lyrics are powerful because you can really reflect and you can watch the past, you can live, you can live in the past, you can really stay there. And sometimes you need to um, live in the moment and, and really feel what you're going through and really get a grasp on that so sometimes you kind of do need to sit and reflect but it's what you do with that reflection that matters so at the end of the song when she's saying walk in your way so you won't crumble to me that's like okay you messed up a little bit not or maybe you didn't mess up maybe these are the cards that have been given to you watch that see how the cause and effect happen there see what you can do and figure out how you can walk in your power figure out how you can come back from this or evolve from this and this meaning whatever it needs to be like a situation um just issues that are prevalent in your life that you can sometimes get stuck on or sometimes dwell on but it's really like we all know well, maybe not all of us, but I feel like when you're self-aware and you're going through certain issues, you know, like, you know all the good advice that there is. You know what you are supposed to do, but yeah, it's really about how you can figure out how to implement change into your life and figure out how to really maneuver yourself healthily and 
yeah, to just not repeat the past, to take it and to be able to actually get a lesson from it, you know? Um, that was my interpretation. Now, the actual writer of this song, let's get into what she said about it. And she said, I think Rise really expresses the need to know where you come from in order to know where you're going. I think that when I say fall in your way so you can crumble, fall in your way so that you can sleep at night, fall in your way so that you can wake up and rise, that was really about honoring my lineage, my past, my bloodline in order for me to involve the person that I need to be to create this album. That is just... Like, when you have music and, and, and again, such simple words you're able to just have so many interpretations. And I wouldn't say that my interpretation is that much different from hers. Hers does focus on, she said, her lineage and how she can basically evolve into the person that she needs to be for this album. And that kind of goes off of what I said, you know, like being able to look at situations being able to look at the past and seeing how what can I do what changes can I make to myself to evolve to move to have different movement than what is usually happening or what worked before what can I do to progress and that being the first song on the album just like just sets you up for the amazing wonderfulness to come so let's get into my second favorite now i do want to clarify when i say second favorite um these are not ranked these songs are not ranked by favoritism these are just my favorites so yeah so the second one that i'm going to talk about is mad featuring lil wayne and this is one of my favorite songs ever and also a wayne verse that gets overlooked i don't know if it's because it's not his genre or it is his genre but you know what i mean it's not like like the hip-hop you know that people want to hear he's really talking about like his life and his experience and that's just why i love this song like the vulnerability that solange has throughout this album and being able to bring on features that are being also vulnerable in this way is so amazing so beautiful she definitely put a chair up for him in the studio <laughs> so let's talk about okay so let's talk about my favorite song on this album definitely my favorite song like definitely my favorite song and let me tell you why i am so tired of us being in the 21st century this is 2023 and people still feel like we need to sit down and play nice because we had a black president or they just feel like or people feel like we've progressed enough and that these racial issues are not real so we can't really be mad about it or they're like oh slavery was 300 400 years ago you're why are you still mad Let's really talk about it because especially in America and the education system that's happening right now, especially in the state of Florida where they're trying to write out things in history books. One, black people's history isn't even properly documented. Two, taking out the small amount of representation and documentation that is, that are in these books. What? And you're telling me I can't be mad? Even my light is mad right now. She flickering because she's like, girl, I feel you. Like, I'm mad too. See? Right. And I'm not about to fix that. I'm sorry. Um, she's just going to have to, yeah. Anywho. Um, but no. Dealing with the, the past, essentially, and seeing how much trauma black people how much trauma our communities have faced and still being upset about it. I'm I'm going to be upset every time I watch a documentary. I'm going to be upset every time I read a book. And I'm going to keep being upset because 
I have the right to be. You have the right to feel your feelings. And I have the right to be upset. So I'm going to be upset. And that's why I love this song. Because it's, it's not like... It's saying, yes, this is me and I'm upset and I'm going to be upset about it. Lil Wayne is talking about his experiences in life and how he's sure there's people mad because he's made it so far because of all the things he's gone through in his life. So people are able to be mad about what they've gone through, what their lineage has gone through, what their people has have gone through. And we're able to be mad about it, especially if the problems still exist. So... Yeah, that's my favorite song, and that is why. <laughs> the next song we're going to talk about on this album is called Tina Taught Me, and the song is actually an interlude into Don't Touch My Hair. But Tina Taught Me is basically Tina, Solange's mom, talking about how much beauty there is in being black and how just because you are pro-black doesn't mean you're anti-white. And she says the two don't go together, and that is... I say that all the time. I say the two don't go together because they don't. Being pro-black and anti-white, that doesn't even make sense. Because I love my people, I hate yours? Question mark? You know? So, Miss Tina was just expressing that there is so much beautifulness and rich history and love and community and culture in black people and we should be able to enjoy that and live in it and you know be ourselves and really just enjoy who we are and where we come from without other people feeling like um alienated which is crazy but like yeah so tina taught me lovely lovely interlude just her mom talking and that goes into don't touch my hair which most of us know this one this is like the i'm pretty sure the like most popular song on this album and I mean the title says it all you know being a black person don't touch our hair I don't think you should touch anybody's hair period without consent but there's just so much richness in our hair and I believe our hair has energy and I've cut my hair off before and I've done so many things to my hair and it holds so much energy it holds so much just history like when I do my hair I just know that the people who came before me they were doing the same things and I just think it's it's definitely a personal thing person by person but hair is so important and if you really are about your energy and protecting it don't let nobody touch your hair okay um that's just that (laughs) okay so the last song i'm gonna talk about because there's 21 songs on this album and this album we can be here all day and break everything down so i'm not gonna talk about every song i'm giving you homework you need to go listen to this if you already haven't it came out in 2016 so I'm not judging you, but listen to it now. Thank you. Anyway, the last song I'm going to talk about is FUBU featuring The Dream and BJ the Chicago Kid. And let me tell you why I love this song. Okay, so FUBU stands for For Us, By Us. And if you do not know... FUBU is a company that started in 1992 by four black men from Queens, New York. Um, And it's just been a staple um, brand when you think of the black community. Like when you think of, I don't know, when I think of the black community, I think of like, and like hip hop type of brands, I think of like Darion, FUBU um rock aware you know so like fubu is definitely one of those brands that is a part of the culture so i just love that this is what she named her song um so fubu is basically ties back to the title and just talks about being a black person and just being like having so many microaggressions and targets on you like in the lyrics it says 
when you're driving in your tinted car and you're a criminal just who you are but you don't know you're gonna make it far and that kind of talks about I'm sure we all have all seen videos of black people getting pulled over for the most ridiculous like reasons but it's mostly because they're black they're being profiled so again this song jogs back to the title having a seat at the table there's not many seats at tables for us as black people and no matter how many organizations and places No matter how many ways they are like, oh, but we're open now and black people can come here. There's still institutions and rules and things set up so that even if we are at the table, like, barely. You know what I mean? Like, we still barely have the we still have stereotypes on us. We still have microaggressions. People see you and they see what you look like not who you are you know and I just love this song because it kind of it also just reminds me of mad it's just like listen I'm gonna be upset sometimes and I want to be in a place that's for me by by me I want to be in a community where I see myself I want to be in areas where I see myself and feel safe and in the song she says like I hope my son plays this loud like It's supposed to be like a triumphant song, I think. To me, it feels triumphant to be black and in in certain spaces that we are, that we've gotten solely by fighting for it. So like Solange herself, I can't speak for her exact experience, but my interpretation of her saying, oh, I want my son, my son to sing this song loud, to me that means like, Look at me, like, I'm your mom, look at our lineage, look at the things that we've come from. I want you to be able to sing this song and say, yeah, this is for us, by us, and keep it going. Like, keep that pride, keep that love, keep the knowledge, keep the growth going, like, and also keep the community together, like, for us, by us. Now, I really can sit here all day and break down every single song on this album but I won't do that because we'll be here all day so (laughs) seriously you have homework and you have to go listen to this album it's amazing I think it's I feel like not if you're feeling lost but if you feel like you need something to ground you this album is there for that this album is here to give you the space that you need to sit in whatever it is that you're feeling and that's why I've revisited it so much and that's why it's one of my favorite albums ever and I feel like it's a popular album but I think more people should listen to it and really like sit in the words and really understand it and just relate their lives back to it because of course this is an album that Solange said she made for herself personally um but the way that it has like transcended onto so many people's lives and how amazing just how how amazing this body of art is is wonderful so please go listen to this thanks for tuning in to Zen's Corner I'll be back